Welcome. Let's take a look at an example of determining whether Rolle's theorem will apply to a function on a specified interval. In this example, we're looking at the function f of x equals the quantity x squared minus 4x times e to the x. And we're looking at the interval from 0 to 4. What we want to do is determine whether Rolle's theorem can be applied, and if so, find all values of c such that f prime at c equals 0. Here we have Rolle's theorem. As just a reminder, let f of x be a continuous function over the closed interval from a to b. In our, our example here, our interval from a to b is 0 to 4, and differentiable over the open interval from a to b. If f at a equals f at b, then there exists at least one c in that interval from a to b, such that f prime at c equals 0. So there are essentially three criteria here that must be met in order to apply Rolle's theorem. First of all, our function must be continuous over the closed interval from a to b. So looking at our function here, we have a product of a polynomial with an exponential function. Polynomials are continuous everywhere, and so is the exponential function. So the product of the two will, in fact, be continuous over all real numbers, and certainly continuous over the interval from 0 to 4. So we will make note of that. The second criteria is that the function is differentiable over the open interval from a to b. In this case, that would mean our function needed to be differentiable for all values of x between 0 and 4. That's our second criteria. Given that we have a product of an polynomial and an exponential function, both of which are differentiable, their product via the product rule is also differentiable. So criteria two is also met. And so we make note of that. The third criteria is that f at a has to equal f at b. So the function at the left endpoint uh, must equal the function evaluated at the right endpoint. So let's explore that f at 0 is equal to 0 squared minus 4 times 0 times e to the 0. If I multiply that out, I, get, I obtain 0 as my output. Let's check our other endpoint, f at 4. Well, f at 4 would be 4 squared minus 4 times 4 times e to the 4th and 4 squared minus 4 times 4 is 0. 0 times e to the 4th will give us 0 as well. So we can say that f at 0 equals f at 4. Now, all three of these criteria have been met, so Rolle's theorem does apply. Now, since Rolle's theorem applies, then our next task is to find all values c such that f prime at c is equal to 0. So to do that, we need the derivative of our function. So f prime of x, we will be using the product rule. The derivative of x squared minus 4x will be 2x minus 4 times e to the x minus, or plus 
the derivative of e to the x, well, the derivative of e to the x is simply e to the x times x squared minus 4x. We're going to go ahead and factor out. We have a common factor of e to the x, so we'll factor that out. So f prime of x equals e to the x times 2x minus 4 plus x squared minus 4x. We can combine uh, like terms inside those brackets and get e to the x times x squared minus 2x minus 4. Now that we have our derivative in a nice simplified form here, we want to find all values of x such that f prime at c equals 0. So f prime at c equals 0 means we want to solve e to the c times c squared minus 2c minus 4 equals 0. Note that e to the c is a constant. I'm going to divide, and it's never equal to 0. So let's divide both sides of this equation by this non-zero constant. That gives us the equation c squared minus 2c minus 4 equals 0. And we're solving for c. This is a quadratic. It's not factorable. So we'll go ahead and apply the quadratic formula to this. Applying the quadratic formula, we get that c is equal to plus or uh, the opposite of b, so that's the opposite of negative 2, plus or minus the square root of b squared, so negative 2 squared, minus 4 times a times c, so 4 times 1 times negative 4, all over 2 times a, so 2 times 1. Looking at some signs here, um, this opposite of negative 2, that will become a positive 2. And we've got a subtraction of a negative number here under the radical, so that will turn into addition. All right, so what do we have? We have c equals 2 plus or minus the square root of 4 plus 16 all over 2. So that's the same as c equals 2 plus or minus the square root of 20 over 2. And 20 has a perfect square factor of 4. So let's bring the 4 out. So we'll have 2 plus or minus. And when we bring the 4 from underneath the radical, the square root of 4 is 2. So 2 times the square root of 5 divided by 2. Um, now I could even factor out a 2 from my numerator. So 2 times 1 plus or minus the square root of 5 over 2. And those 2's will divide out, leaving us with 1. And so what we finally end up with is c equals 1 plus or minus the square root of 5. Now we're not done. These values of c, they need to lie within the interval um, from a to b. So I have two values. I've got c equals 1 plus the square root of 5, and I've got c equals 1 minus the square root of 5. And keep in mind that the interval we're interested in is 0 to 4. Well, 1 minus the square root of 5 is approximately equal to negative 1.24. So negative 1.24, or 1 minus the square root of 5, 
is not in the interval from 0 to 4. <clears throat> so that is not the value that we are guaranteed exists on that interval. Whereas 1 plus the square root of 5 is approximately equal to 3.24, and that certainly is within this interval from 0 to 4 that we're interested in. So based on Rolle's theorem, we're claiming that f prime at 1 plus the square root of 5 should equal 0. And that's easy enough to verify. Uh, we can evaluate our derivative here and see if it equals 0 as we claim. So we'd have e to the 1 plus square root of 5 times 1 plus square root of 5 squared minus 2 times 1 plus the square root of 5 minus 4. That equals e to the 1 plus square root of 5. Now we need to use the distributive property uh, to square that. And when we do that, we get 1 plus 2 times the square root of 5 plus 5. Continuing, we have minus 2, minus 2 square roots of 5, and then minus 4. And as we collect up like terms, I've got a positive 2 times square root of 5 and a minus, so those sum to 0. I've got a 1 plus 5, which is 6, and a minus 2 and a minus 4, which is minus 6. So I have a positive 6 and a minus 6. So what we end up with is e to the 1 plus square root of 5 times 0, and uh, any uh, real number times 0 is equal to 0. So in fact, um, the c that we found, the 1 plus square root of 5, does in fact cause the derivative to equal 0. I hope this is helpful.